April 27th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Ruth chapters 3 and 4 from the Old Testament. At that time, Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, I must find a home for you so you will be secure. Now Boaz, with those female servants you worked, is our close relative. Look, tonight he is winnowing barley at the threshing floor. So bathe yourself, rub on some perfumed oil and get dressed up. Then go down to the threshing floor, but don't let the man know you're there until he finishes his meal. When he gets ready to go to sleep, take careful notice of the place where he lies down. Then go, uncover his legs, and lie down beside him. He will tell you what you should do. Ruth replied to Naomi, I will do everything you have told me to do. So she went down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law had instructed her to do. When Boaz had finished his meal and was feeling satisfied, he lay down to sleep at the far end of the grain heap. Then Ruth crept up quietly and covered his legs and lay down beside him. In the middle of the night, he was startled and turned over. Now he saw a woman lying beside him. He said, Who are you? She replied, I am Ruth, your servant. Marry your servant, for you are a guardian of the family interest. He said, May you be rewarded by the Lord, my dear. This act of devotion is greater than what you did before. For you have not sought to marry one of the young men, whether rich or poor. Now, my dear, don't worry. I tend to do for you everything you propose. For everyone in the village knows that you are a worthy woman. Now, yes, it is true that I am a guardian, but there is another guardian who is a closer relative than I am. Remain here tonight, then in the morning, if he agrees to marry you, fine, let him do so. But if he does not want to do so, I promise, as surely as the Lord lives, to marry you. Sleep here until morning. So she slept beside him until morning. She woke up while it was still dark. Boaz thought no one must know that a woman visited the threshing floor. Then he said, Hold out the shawl you are wearing and grip it tightly. As she held it tightly, he measured out about sixty pounds of barley into the shawl and put it on her shoulders. Then he went into town, and she returned to her mother-in-law. When Ruth returned to her mother-in-law, Naomi asked, How did things turn out for you, my daughter? Ruth told her about all the man had done for her. She said, He gave me these sixty pounds of barley, for he said to me, Do not go to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Then Naomi said, Stay put, my daughter, until you know how the matter turns out, for the man will not rest until he has taken care of the matter today. Now Boaz went up to the village gate and sat there. Then along came the guardian whom Boaz had mentioned to Ruth. Boaz said, Come here and sit down, John Doe. So he came and sat down. Boaz chose ten of the village leaders and said, Sit down here. So they sat down. Then Boaz said to the guardian, Naomi, who has returned from the region of Moab, is selling the portion of land that belongs to our relative Elimelech. So I am legally informing you, acquire it before those sitting here and before the leaders of my people. If you want to exercise your rights to redeem it, then do so. But if not, then tell me so I will know, for you possess the first option to redeem it. I am next in line after you. He replied, I will redeem it. Then Boaz said, When you acquire the field from Naomi, you must also acquire Ruth, the Moabite, the wife of our deceased relative, in order to preserve his family name by raising up a descendant who will inherit his property. The guardian said, Then I am unable to redeem it, for I would ruin my own inheritance in that case. You may exercise my redemption option, for I am unable to redeem it. Now this used to be a customary way to finalize a transaction involving redemption in Israel. A man would remove his sandal and give it to the other party. This was a legally binding act in Israel. So the guardian said to Boaz, you may acquire it, and he removed his sandal. Then Boaz said to the leaders and all the people, you are witnesses today that I have acquired from Naomi all that belong to Elimelech, Kilian, and Malon. I have also acquired Ruth, the Moabite, the wife of Malon, as my wife to raise up a descendant who will inherit his property, so the name of the deceased might not disappear from among his relatives and from his village. You are witnesses today. All the people who were at the gate and elders replied, 
We are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is entering your home like Rachel and Leah, both of whom built up the house of Israel. May you prosper in Ephrathah and become famous in Bethlehem. May your family become like the family of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah, through the descendants the Lord gives you by this young woman. So Boaz married Ruth and had sexual relations with her. The Lord enabled her to conceive and she gave birth to a son. The village women said to Naomi, May the Lord be praised because he has not left you without a guardian today. May he become famous in Israel. He will encourage you and provide for you when you are old, for your daughter-in-law, who loves you, has given him birth. She is better to you than seven sons. Naomi took the child and placed him on her lap. She became his caregiver. The neighbor women named him, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. Now he became the father of Jesse, David's father. These are the descendants of Perez. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Aminadab. Aminadab was the father of Nakshon. Nakshon. Nakshon was the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz. Boaz was the father of Obed. Obed was the father of Jesse. And Jesse was the father of David. God, sometimes in uh, theology or, or seminary classes, we talk about the Davidic line. and uh, Sometimes it sounds very sterile uh, and very academic. Yet here you have given us this beautiful love story. A love story between Naomi and Ruth. A love story between Ruth and Boaz. And most of all, an amazing love story between Ruth and you. And this beautiful love story is the Davidic line. Her son Obed uh, goes on eventually to be part of David's line. And as we know, David's line eventually becomes uh, the birth of Jesus Christ, your son. I think it would be kind of fun to meet Ruth and Boaz. Uh, Boaz, as we know, was probably quite a bit older than, than Ruth and probably quite wealthy, possibly had other wives too because of his status in the, in the community. Um, but you can tell he's a little bit feisty. He goes to the gate uh, to redeem uh, Naomi's property with his, his fellow kinsmen. And everybody knows Naomi. She's a, an older woman, has a piece of property. Why would you not want to add that piece of property <laughs> to your acquisition of properties already. So the guy's like, yeah, sure. Um, and I love how Boaz is, is a little bit honoring. He's like, oh, sorry, did I forget to mention you also get Ruth, who needs to bear a child to carry on uh, her husband's name. Oh, no, I don't want that. That would dilute my inheritance. <laughs> and then Ruth, who, who so bravely and obediently to Naomi, who so bravely goes out in in pitch darkness to a camp of men who have been working and then drinking all night um, and, and, and waits for this man and then boldly proposes to him out of her love for Naomi so that they will have somebody to take care of them. It, the two of them uh, are just amazing together. Ruth and her boldness and her faith, her obedience to Naomi, and more important, her obedience to you. And then Boaz, his obedience to you and his love for Naomi. And I think about that a lot with my friends who are married, that the reason that you, you bring people together in marriage, there's a few of them, but one of the main reasons is because together they will do more for your ministry than apart. And here we see out of obedience to you, God, of you bringing the two of them together and them doing amazing things for your kingdom, including creating Obed, who was the great, 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 great grandfather of David um, in the line for your son. So thank you for giving us this amazing love story. So we can see that out of the love that you have for us, if we are obedient to you, that you will always take care of us. 
just like at the end of the story, Naomi is no longer be call, being called Mara. She's now being called Naomi. Um, because through the son, you have fulfilled her as well. Just like you did with your son, Jesus Christ, for us. Thank you, God. In your son's name we pray. Amen.